Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Shafiqur Rahman. I'm an associate professor and head of department, business administration at International Open University. I welcome everyone, those who are watching this session, live session. Um, today, we are going to discuss uh, a very important issue will share with you the practices of corporate social responsibility activities, activities by uh, Islamic banks. Uh, especially for an example, I will present you the case of Islamic banks in Bangladesh, so that you can have an idea how Islamic banks are engaging themselves in the corporate social responsibility activities. So in the beginning of the session, I will share with you the PowerPoint slides. So, you can see that the title of today's presentation is Corporate Social Responsibility Practices in Islamic Banks. So, uh, my background is uh, given here. Uh, my, I, I was, um, a marine engineer in the beginning of my career. So I did marine engineering. I studied economics in the US Foreign Service Institute in Washington, DC. I have got an MBA from IBA Dhaka University. I um, also got a graduate certificate in research from Western Sydney University, Australia. I did my PhD from Macquarie University, Australia. And I'm now going through a postdoctoral program at University of Malaysia, Parlis. Uh, it's a like a kind of a distance program. So with my profile, I would like to take you also um, uh, about a few more things like my, my past experience. I worked for US Embassy in Dhaka. I was a founder and MBA coordinator at International Islamic University, Chittagong, Dhaka campus. Uh, as you know that my current engagement is associate professor and head of department business administration, International Open University. And I am also a vice president for Australian Academy of Business Leadership here in Sydney, Australia. So um, definition of CSR, um, I should give you an idea what CSR is or what CSR means, corporate social responsibility. Before I go to the definition, uh, the, I will actually explain you the concept corporate social responsibility. It is the social responsibility of the corporations. Now, what is the social responsibility of corporations? Why they have the social responsibility? In fact, in today's society, we have businesses, they are existing uh, along with the society. Uh, if we think of like hundreds of years ago, trade and commerce was not institutionalized the way it is today. So businesses are a sole beneficiary of today's social structure. As we have the society and social structure, we have the economy and we have a like, these societies exist within the framework of countries and nationalities. So businesses are being benefited from the economy, from the society. So if society does not exist, businesses will not exist. So it is company's interest that they try to support, they try to benefit um, the society. And on the other hand, uh, the companies, they are also a part of the society. So companies, when they support the social causes, they also get the uh, benefit because of their contribution to the society. It's a kind of promotion, business promotion for them. So now we can conclude in a way that corporations, they got some social responsibility because they are the beneficiaries of the society. 
Now, World Business Council for Sustainable Development, they have uh, come up with a definition. This definition says that corporate social responsibility is the continuing commitment by business to contribute to economic development while improving the quality of life of the workforce and their families, as well as the community and society at large. Which means this is the responsibility, responsibility of the business, okay, or commitment of the business to contribute to the economic development of the society and also the well-being of the workforce of the company and their families and finally the community and society at, society at large so now um, as a human being we have the responsibilities for ourselves for our families and relatives nation and mankind so and i already said similar to them like human beings corporations got responsibilities and I already explained that. Now, before we go to the uh, contribution of stomach banks um, in the society, I will also tell about the dimensions of corporate social responsibility. So we can see there are 10 dimension, dimensions of corporate social responsibilities. So, the first one is obligation to the society. We already talked about it. The next one is stakeholders involvement. So whenever a company is doing some kind of social work, social activities, social support, it should involve all the stakeholders, like its employees, its management, its shareholders, it's customers. When everyone is involved, then a positive message is spread around. And the company can take benefit out of it. And the third one is improving the quality of life. So the amount of money that businesses spend for the society or the amount of support uh, businesses that give to the society, ultimately that help improve the quality of life of the citizens. Another part of uh, CSR is economic development. Uh, because if companies cannot make good contribution, then company cannot make good money. On the other hand, I should explain it in a way that when companies even pay tax, that tax helps the government, uh, that helps the government to improve the uh, health of its like tax budget. So when companies do the business activities, they already contribute to the economic development because they create employments, they pay tax to the government. Uh, companies actually circulate the money. Businesses, they circulate the money. So that's how economic development happens. So this economic development also we can consider as social corporate social responsibility activities, all right? And then the next one is ethical business practice. So what is ethics? Ethics is not law. Ethics is something what should be. So businesses should do fair business practice Businesses should look after their customers. Businesses should not deceive their customers. Businesses should keep their commitment. So all these issues we can 
we can uh, summarize in the term ethical business practice. Because there are a lot of businesses doing unethical business practices, that's why the importance of ethical business practice is increasing day by day. Now, companies should be also law abiding. There are laws and enforcement of laws may not be there in many countries, but even there is no enforcement from the part of the police, may not be from the part of the government, but companies, they themselves should follow the law, follow the rules and regulation of the government, pay the tax on time, uh, renew their license on time. So companies also should be law abiding. The next point is voluntariness. Corporate social responsibility activities are also voluntary activities. Corporate social responsibility activities are voluntary activities. Like no one is forcing you to do the task that you have to spend money for the society. In some countries, already there are some uh, policies that like India, um, in some European countries that companies should engage themselves in social um, responsibility activities. So, but in most countries, it is not a mandatory requirement. It is an optional or voluntary activities. In addition to that, um, I would also focus on human rights. We all know about universal declaration of human rights. In many countries, human rights are being violated. So there are a couple of uh, dimensions of the human rights, like companies should not, like big companies in many countries, they work with the government. So the companies who respect human rights in many countries, they actually do not agree to work with the government. Even they quit that country, but they do not like uh, cooperate, the cooperate the government in terms of when they are doing business, if the government is violating the human rights of their citizens. So companies can help promote human rights by giving a message to the government that if you are violating the human rights, then we'll not be able to work with you. Big companies, especially oil and gas companies, they are huge, they have huge uh, power and the ability to even convince the government or influence the governments that we are not ready to support any government who are violating human rights. Then another aspect of uh, social responsibility of the corporations is to support, uh, help protection of environment. Uh, we'll talk about it uh, soon in details, how companies are supporting, but one of their responsibilities, companies should not do anything that can damage the environment. Like now, the automobile industry, we know that like they manufacture millions of cars and car because of carbon emission of these cars, the environment is polluting. So now, um, on the other hand, companies are now coming up with alternate uh, fuel sources like electric power or solar power to uh, manufacture when they manufacture their automobiles, they are looking at the alternate energy sources to run the cars so that the environment is not polluted. And also the finally number 10 is transparency and accountability. So transparency and accountability 
are the parts of the responsibilities of the businesses. Companies should be transparent what they are doing and they should be accountable to their stakeholders. So now, uh, dear audience, brothers and sisters, I'm going to the next slide that in Bangladesh, the banking sector, they are focusing on five areas uh, in terms of their social responsibility activities. First of all, humanitarian and disaster relief. So whenever there is a natural disaster in the country, banks in Bangladesh, they come forward to rescue the, the people affected by the disaster, like cyclone, like flood. They also provide food and shelter and medicine whenever there is a big natural disaster. Um, and also banks are engaged in a various humanitarian activities. They provide winter clothes or distribute winter clothes uh, during the winter to the poor people. Uh, they distribute food uh, to some areas where people are suffering because of drought or for other natural disaster. So this is the first uh, issue that I'm talking about, humanitarian and disaster relief activities by the banking sector of Bangladesh. Then this is done by all banks, as I'm saying. Uh, then educational programs. Many banks have come up with educational programs like they have built colleges, schools, uh, training centers, um, so that the, that help people to get employment with their skills. The next one is healthcare initiatives. A number of banks have established hospitals, like general hospitals, then eye hospitals, dental clinics, um, and also sometimes they develop or they bring with some kind of temporary healthcare support in the villages where there is a serious issue like, uh, like diarrhea or any other outbreak that is um, uh, impacting people and people are suffering a lot. Then also uh, the CSR activities, uh, practices that helps in the country to promote the sports, art and culture. Uh, for example, uh, there was a cricket tournament in Bangladesh, big cricket tournament. Uh, it is an international level tournament. And then uh, banks supported uh, to um, make that event successful. And the last one is protection of environment and green banking. So banks in Bangladesh, they are now focusing on green banking, uh, which means they try to use less pepper, uh, for their day-to-day -day activities. They are going through all, most of the online activities. Um, and in addition to that, banks themselves are using, many banks are using solar power to run their uh, buildings and operations. So banks are focusing on green banking and while they are giving credit or loans to their customers, they also look at the project, whether that project is more or less environmental friendly or not. So that is how the banks are focusing on, um, focusing on the protection of environment and green banking. Now, now we'll talk about Islamic banks. So all banks in Bangladesh, they are involved in humanitarian and disaster relief, education programs, healthcare, sports, art and culture, and production of environment and green banking. All banks, like irrespective of Islamic bank or conventional bank, they are involved in this. Now, Islamic banks, they are involved some other activities. That is only Islamic banks are doing that. So that's the focus of today's uh, presentation that additional CSR practices by the Islamic banks uh, in Bangladesh. So first, um, 
uh, topic is jakat. Uh, Islamic banks are now collecting jakat um, from various sources, even from their own funds that they are um, having as their own assets. And then from the client's uh, jakat. So in various sources, they collect jakat and then they distribute the jakat as per Islamic Sharia. So this is something Islamic banks are doing, uh, which conventional banks, uh, they are not doing in that way that Islamic bank is doing. Among the con conventional banks, uh, one bank, uh, so far I know that they advertise every year uh, that they collect uh, jakat and they distribute jakat. But on the other hand, all Islamic banks are focusing on this kind of like jakat collection, jakat distribution, and uh, poverty alleviation activities. So the next one is cash waqf or trust fund. So Islamic banks in Bangladesh, um, many of them, they are involved with this project like some people before their death or even they are alive in the world, they uh, create cash work fund and keep the money in that work fund that the profit of the fund that being utilized to run the orphanage, run the mosques or to run other charitable activities. So that is very fascinating and that is really rewarding and benefiting the society. And now another very interesting and important part that uh, Islamic banks are engaged in that is Islamic microfinance. So usually people may not have the concept of uh, microfinance. Uh, so if we like only talk, discuss about finance, then for some businesses, what is finance? like big businesses, they talk about finance, but when small business talks about finance, then that fall under the category of small finance, or we call it microfinance, very small, small businesses. So Islamic microfinance, they are run based on Islamic Sharia principles. In fact, all the Islamic banks in Bangladesh, they have their uh, Sharia board. Each of these Islamic banks are having Sharia board. In Bangladesh, there are eight Islamic banks currently operating. And there is a central Sharia bank to make sure that all the banks, they have Sharia boards, whether these Sharia boards are complying the guidelines and policies of central Sharia board. And in the central Sharia board, they have Islamic scholars and experts who make sure that Islamic banks are being operated through Islamic Sharia or not. So these Islamic banks, when they are involved in microfinance, they do the microfinance as per Islamic principle. But this microfinance also can be considered as a social responsibility activities because many other banks, they are not involved in this microfinance because the operating cost is very high, number one reason, Second is that takes a lot of like supervisory activities and lot of other engagement from the bank side so that they carefully skip that part. But through the Islamic microfinance, thousands and thousands, thousands of people are being benefited. Um, and that is already visible in many parts of the country in Bangladesh. Another part that Kardi Hassan Benevolent Loan, so Islamic banks also provide this kind of uh, small loans to the people. And over a period of time, they recover this loan from the people. Some uh, kind of uh, people like those who are suffering, those who are poor or those who need short-term loan, even it could be a student that they need a student loan. So some Islamic banks are engaged in Kardi Hassan projects. And finally, 
in addition to all these four things, Islamic banks, they train their staff to demonstrate Islamic value in their personal life and corporate life. So if I would like to move further, uh, I have some recommendations about it. Uh, my recommendations uh, are establishing a CSR network or forum among the Islamic banks in Bangladesh. Currently, each and every bank in Bangladesh, Islamic banks in Bangladesh, they are doing their social, socially responsible activities individually. But if there is a network or forum among the banks, then they can do it in a better way. Like if there is a flood, and now without any coordination, everyone is there with food. And then who is going to provide like the clothing and the medicine, uh, maybe the shelter. So if there is a good coordination, then there will be an opportunity that they are fund or finance from the CSR fund is better utilized. My second recommendation is publishing separate CSR reports by Islamic banks. The Central Bank's Bank of Bangladesh that publishes CSR report every year for all the banks. But if the Islamic banks, they can publish a separate report, then their activities will be visible to the nation uh, and to the government that how much Islamic banks are contributing. Uh, then the engaging employees of Islamic banks in CSR program, that's my other recommendation. And also the last recommendation is engaging CSR consultant to harness the benefit of a strategic CSR for all Islamic banks. Now, whenever the banks are engaged in socially responsible activities, if banks can engage appropriate consultants, they can guide them how banks can engage themselves in strategic CSR, which means the kind of CSR initiative banks should take that society equally the bank, both sides will be benefited. The goal of the banks will be achieved partially through the CSR activities. That's what I am suggesting, engaging CSR consultants to harness the benefits of strategic CSR for all Islamic banks. So in the conclusion, um, I said here that Islamic banks in Bangladesh exhibit a great commitment to CSR due to compliance, social and religious obligations. Every year, the expenditure to CSR is increasing significantly. And the Bangladesh society also being increasingly it is. Uh, and finally, that I would say those who are working in Islamic banks, what they should do, they should, they are engaged in CSR activities, but individually, banks employees can perform better job performance, as well as performing in implementing CSR initiatives. Uh, the leaders in like the banks, like team leaders, be the role model because uh, these are Islamic banks. And if the team leaders, they become the role models for others to follow, uh, then Islamic banks will demonstrate Islam to the general public. And, uh, and also some people, those who are not in leadership role, even they can follow the team leaders engaged in CSR activities. Uh, so in that way, all of them, the employees, the bank management, uh, even the customers, all of them can engage in corporate social responsibility activities and can benefit the society. Uh, dear audience, uh, brothers and sisters, this is a case of Islamic banks in Bangladesh who are engaged in socially responsible activities and benefiting the, benefiting the society. Similarly, other banks in 
other Islamic banks in many other parts of the world are also contributing to the society, contributing to the communities by doing social respons socially responsible activities. Uh, in Malaysia, in Pakistan, in Middle East, in many parts of the world, wherever there are Islamic banks, Islamic banks are demonstrating uh, socially responsible activities and engaging themselves to the society and community. So dear brothers and sisters, um, at this point, I will stop uh, this discussion and I will have also um, start another discussion uh, about the institution that I belong to. And if you have any questions about my new discussion about the Department of Business Administration of International Open University or the CSR activities of Islamic Bank, if you have any further question, maybe we can discuss it at the end of today's uh, session. Uh, maybe we can discuss it in another 10, 15 minutes. So uh, at this point, I will uh, share with you about the BBA program or bachelor's program of International um, Open University. So uh, a little bit about the university. The International Open University was launched by, okay, let me share the uh, PowerPoint so that like you can see this. Give me a second. So the International Open University was launched by Dr. Bilal Phillips in 2007. He is the founder and chancellor of this university, International Open University, or we call it IUU. The vice chancellor and the president of this university is Dr. Uh, Cherno Omar Barry. A head office of this university is located in the Gambia. Now, uh, I already talked about my profile. Um, and now we will talk about this program the BBA program. So first of all, I will talk about the importance of business program. Now, it days, the importance of business program is enormous. Globally, there are hundreds and thousands of universities that are offering business programs to equip, to enrich the knowledge of the university students, um, make them an expert in the respective fields, especially in the field of management, marketing, finance, accounting, supply chain, economics, and all these areas. Because of today's, in today's world, business is becoming complex for many reasons. Special, one of the reasons is the globalization. There are competitiveness in business. There are competition in customer satisfaction. There are competition in developing quality products with competitive price. There are marketing initiatives um, where the companies would like to uh, sell the products to the end consumers. And there are various tools and techniques, how a raw material can be processed into a final product. And the final product is distributed uh, globally through the wholesaler, the retailer, uh, up to the hands of the customer. On the other hand, companies also do a lot of marketing activity. Through the marketing activity, they create the demand of their product and then manufacture that product and uh, make sure that the product reaches to the customer's hand. So to meet the demand of this uh, skill, human resources uh, that universities are engaged in business programs as, and similarly, our business program at International Open University we have a business program that will not the meet of the need of the market that will also comply the requirements of 
Islamic um, uh, values that will also comply with the uh, need of the uh, human being, uh, humanitarian areas also the, they, they will cover. So to ensure that we produce uh, effective and efficient human resources, our Bachelors of Business program is structured um, to produce the managers, like tomorrow's managers. Uh, so if we talk about the number of courses, we have 45 courses, plus we have a BBA thesis. There are total eight semesters, um, and that in eight semesters, um, in seven semesters, we offer 42 courses, and in the final semester, we offer three courses that all together, 45 courses. So in the first semester, we have a number of experts. They transform the minds of the student. Um, in addition to the business courses, we have some other courses blended to this course to uh, mold the minds of the future business leaders. So we have uh, Islamic Akida, Akida 101. Uh, this course is taught by uh, Dr. Bilal Phillips, Imad uh, Lagardain, uh, Muhammad Salama. We have etiquettes of seeking knowledge. Uh, that course being offered by or presented to the students by Dr. Bilal Phillips, uh, Samsa Jahan, uh, Muhammad Salama. So we can see that like, not only we want to produce future business managers, but we want to produce human beings, those who, have, who will have the accountability and responsibility towards the society, uh, towards the civilization, and also uh, complying with Islamic uh, principles and practices. So we have also some other uh, expert faculty members, very strong and capable in their own respective fields, principles of economics, uh, being taught by Ashadu Ashali, Introduction to Business by Mr. Mansoor Danish, Principles of Marketing, um, also being taught by Asha, Ashadu Ashali, and uh, we can see Dr. Nisar Ahmed is teaching Principles of Management. So we have many other experts um, are in our pool and our business program is very popular. Uh, you can, those who are interested in this program, they can join this program because this is um, a online program with a lot of activities to enhance the knowledge of the participants. Um, also, if I take you down to the website of our university, you can see that we have a lot of uh, programs. Um, we have faculties, like seven faculties, and we have uh, under the seven faculties, a lot of programs. Um, and now if I take you to the Bachelor of Business Administration side, give me a second, we will be able to open it, yes. So this is the Bachelor of Business Administration side of uh, this International Open University. It talks about the program learning outcomes. So anyone can look at it and see that what outcome our program will uh, bring, what impact they will uh, have on the future graduates. And also this program is aligned with International Open University's mission and vision. And we have a discussion on or description of the courses overview on each semester. So anyone can visit our website and look at these um, uh, pages and courses. Um, and if anyone wants to enroll, they can enroll now. Just it's a matter of a click. So with those few words, I would like to conclude my speech before the question and answer session. And if I would like to summarize my previous speech that I talked about uh, corporate social responsibility activities of Islamic banks in Bangladesh and also Islamic banks in other parts of the world. They are helping the societies, benefiting the societies. At the same time, they are engaging themselves in uh, with the customers, with their stakeholders through these activities. Not only that, 
many banks are utilizing this opportunity to brand themselves that they care for the society. In fact, Islam teaches us uh, to care for ourselves, care for our families and neighbors, and care for the society. And the Islamic banks are also demonstrating their responsibility through the corporate social responsible activities. And the second part of my discussion was the Bachelors of Business Administration under the Department of Business Administration of International Open University. So this is a unique program. Anyone would like to pursue their career in business? I think this program should be their number one choice. There are many reasons for that. One of the reason is we have all the lectures recorded and supplemented by live session by the faculty members. Uh, we round the clock support the students, uh, help them to enrich their knowledge. Um, and we have now, we are starting our fall semester and the enrollment in this fall semester will, will be closed end of this month. So anyone is interested to pursue their career in business and would like to enroll this university, this is an opportunity. You have a, uh, just a couple of weeks in your hand. Think about it, make up your mind, let everyone know among your friends and relatives, um, among your colleagues. Uh, one of the great opportunities because it is online, uh, supported by other uh, supplementary activities. This program is for them, those who are already working somewhere and still they want to pursue their university degree and careers. Such opportunity, now if I uh, explain it in a way that I have been, um, I have been as a faculty member for many universities and institutions, and also I have visited many uh, universities globally, including uh, the Harvard Business School and met the directors, I met the said School of Business, uh, Oxford University. I have visited many other universities in Australia. I have been living here for last 16 years, many other universities in Singapore and Malaysia, and also the home country, Bangladesh. So from my experience, um, this program is a really, really good program compared to other programs. I'm not saying that, that this program is the best in the world, but this is a unique program where you can uh, take the advantage, uh, leverage the opportunity uh, for yourself uh, if you want to enrich your knowledge because we are not only uh, trying to help you academically, but also we are trying to bring a lot of uh, practical experience and examples uh, from the industry. So our focus is uh, blending the program with theoretical knowledge and also industry experience together to make sure that the, you are job ready. So uh, as we said, always employers look for the people who are who have the employability skills. So our university prepares graduates uh, with and focuses on employability skills. So uh, attitude building, uh, working with the team, uh, then caring for the people and society, caring for the customers. Um, so all these aspects are being uh, molded while, while they're the students of the uh, this university, especially as a head of uh, business administration, I'll tell that uh, we do our best. Not only that, like we try our best, but we know how to improve the attitude of the students, how to help the student gain the knowledge and through the various steps of assessments and examinations, we make sure that we have the right benchmark um, as an institution, uh, as, as a global institution, I would rather say. So let's take the advantage. Our fall semester just has begun and the enrollment will close end of this month. Uh, I hope if 
you want to make up your mind, make a decision today. So I'll take any questions if anyone has, and then uh, we'll go from there. So if we do not have any question, uh, I would like to close this session and I would like to thank everyone for their patient hearing and wish you all the best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.